Frankie and I always have to say this. We don't read. We're illiterate, but we, we love the idea of books. So Foundation is this um, – it's 70 to 80 years old. It's, it's, it's an old sci-fi series by Isaac Asimov that covered multiple books, um, but it's like the rise and fall of this empire over a thousand years and sort of this guy predicting what's going to happen. Like, oh, this is going to be – catastrophic and then trying to sort of maybe not stop it, but maybe make it that an empire can sort of survive and, and, and goodness can come out of it. Let's turn on Pete here. Uh, do we have a do we have a, a safe word or a stop word? We should come up with one because we're watching uh, on two different. Yeah, or a pepper. Peppers. <laughs> <laughs> Yell out peppers anytime you want me to stop. Yeah. That's our safe um, word. <laughs> I don't know if it's safe word is the right... And I mean, this series basically influenced all of the most popular sci-fi you're familiar with. At the same time, it's a really tough adaptation. And it's interesting. He's like, yeah. this is super hard to adapt. <laughs> right, 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 right. I mean, I, I, I know that there's a lot of skepticism sort of in, you know, sci-fi, maybe book circles or sci-fi. You know, just kind of hard sci-fi circles are like, are they going to be able to do this? Let's say that Apple has infinite money. And so if <laughs> anybody... <laughs> If anybody's going to be able to do it, throw the kizash just like <laughs> Isaac Asimov strip club, just like make the, it rain on his dead body. On his dead body. Oh my God. People need to remember that Apple Plus is super desperate for a big show. Every, they need a big show. Everybody wants their Game of yep. Thrones. I mean, my God, HBO's got three spinoffs they just announced. Yeah. That's how desperate they are for Game of Thrones. HBO wants their own Game of Thrones. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, everybody's kind of chasing that next big thing. And, and it's increasingly tough, I think, because there's so many uh, streaming services out there. And Apple Plus, you're right, just doesn't. So I think the hope is... The foundation is this like massively revered novel. Maybe that'll change, you know, change some numbers for them. It's so weird that we're in this age where just because you spend more money on it and make it look and and feel so real and lived in, it doesn't really matter. Like his dark materials on HBO, it's a good show. They're spending so much money on it for me to just go, it's a good show. It's, it's As opposed funny. to, yeah. I gotta watch this. Got it. Yeah. It's so. Yeah, ex yeah. I mean, the show looks incredible incredible it's so expensive and i just right. don't know i don't know how hbo feels about it because i know it's probably more expensive than the viewers i don't see crazy buzz right it's not about it. Thrones. no i think it's probably it's really well liked because it's well made but i'm not going to get into what happens at the end with that out of the way let's look at what we Thanks, see Pete, for not spoiling yeah. Yeah. Off the cap to me it looks like they're going to focus on the initial two or three stories in the first book for season one that seems like a good idea considering how fast time passes in the series okay peppers the show is already starting off on the right foot dawes but what's his the actor's real name Jared Harris. Yeah. Oh, Baby. and I loved like the sort of sinisterness of Anderson Dawes and Expanse. I also just watched Chernobyl on HBO. Very different genre, but like in that, he's like much closer, I think, to what he might be in Foundation, where he's this scientist who's like really giving his life and his health to try to save the Soviet people uh, from the Chernobyl disaster. And it's like amazing stuff, like so well made, so well acted. And so like, man, they could not have picked a better lead, I think, for this show. But also they got Lee Pace, who is amazing and can do, he's now like, because of Guardians of the Galaxy, I think he's got like a tougher guy thing going, but he's so good. It, he's so good he can do it, anything. Totally. Like I used to watch Pushing Daisies where he's like the romantic lead. Yes. Hilarious, heartwarming show. Fantastic. This man has so much range. Okay, like totally with you that like these two alone, I'm like, sure, you got me. You got me. Pushing Daisies, Sensitive. that's really what, I first ever oh. saw him in. This is a good show. Jam. Dirty and disheveled here, which means they might be adding some scenes that lead up to an appearance in court he has in the books. There's an unknown character oh, looking at hey. this. Oh, from uh, from How to Get Away with Murder. Yes, he's also one of the little kids in Harry Potter. Right. I was really sad with what they did with him and how to get away with murder yeah, i'm not gonna ru honestly, ruin anything you gotta I'm, watch it uh it's it... i'm not gonna say i boycotted the show <laughs> but like i did stop watching at a certain point so like take take that for what you will yes around uh, the same know, time 
to the yeah, thing I'm referring. Very, very coincidentally <laughs> at the same time. So mm. this one that looks really cool could possibly be related to hyperspace since they're going to have to set that up and somewhat explain how people move around the galaxy. So visually, the show looks There's amazing. another unknown character at yeah. night with something oh, like sure. a lantern. Apple if I had to guess Apple about this, I would most of what we learn about the Galactic Empire and all of its worlds and systems and everything else that's going on in this huge story. We find out through conversations with two people in a room. So the TV series is going to have to show us all this stuff. We can't have a bunch of exposition dumps. So it makes sense for us to see a lot of different stuff to flesh out the world. Pete's talking about like, well, listen, we can't have a bunch of exposition dumps in a in a big science fiction show. And I'm like, well, actually, Game of Thrones <laughs> certainly did that plenty and was still like the number one cable show of its time. But, you know, I agree with you, Pete. They shouldn't. They shouldn't do that. Yes. Hopefully they don't. What new shows need to do, it's okay if you have a little too much to explain because novels. What you yeah. need to do is have these incredibly tantalizing, interesting characters because that's what Game of Thrones had. You yeah. love Arya and you think these... Yeah. Two blonde twins are evil and twisted. I can't tell you how many Game of Thrones people I talked to where they didn't really know what was going on. I've read oh, the yeah. books. I knew what was happening top to bottom. They had no idea yeah. and they were happy I was explaining it to them, but ultimately it didn't matter. They liked the characters. They knew right. emotionally what was happening. You'll, That's what exactly. this show has to do as well. Characters we love, world building we love. Don't get us bogged down in, in details, in you know over long explanations like just kind of create this world and I think that people will appreciate it. He asks if she's familiar with his work. She says in theory and he quickly corrects her saying it's not a theory. I is do get annoyed. Like, I mean, well, I, I know what you work on in theory. Like, ah, oh, it's not a theory. I'm like, you're a scientist, bro. It is theory. Like everything <laughs> in science is theory. Like it's just, <laughs> you test theories and then you validate them, but it's still a theory. <laughs> Chris coming in with the nerdy nitpicks. You're <laughs> yeah, nerdy no, nitpicks. you're right. Even gravity is still technically yeah. a theory. <laughs> it's, it's a theory. It's a theory that we have tested and validated and all that. It's yes. still a theory. Has created this field of psychohistory, which is able to use mathematics to predict where things are going, basically. It doesn't work on the level of individuals, but it is able to look at big groups of people and come to conclusions about where society is headed. He's been working on it for a long time, and he's come to the conclusion that not only will the Empire fall, that Trantor itself will fall, but that that's going to lead to 30,000 years of barbarism. Basically, Peppers. basically, this guy can predict what's going to happen with, with, with the Empire that is currently you know existing in the solar system, and that it's going to destroy itself and then lead to thousands of years of, of just chaos and darkness. You know, you can't stop it, but what you could do is maybe minimize it and control it. And da, 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 da. But what fascinates me is psychohistory, like this was 70, 80 years ago, and now we have social media and algorithms and AI and all these things that like actually can predict individual behavior. Pete talks about like in the books, it doesn't predict individual behavior, but it's so crazy that like I wonder if they're going to – just leave the story as is and just pretend like we don't have some of the stuff we have now that literally can affect and predict people's behaviors. Yeah. You know, that you can like literally widespread manipulate people with social media and whatnot. I think this yeah. is just yeah, a like, testament to Asimov and like he's totally. constantly having his finger on the pulse of the future. Like he was a futurist. He he saw it coming. Him and uh, Philip K. Dick and all these people predicting cell phones awesome. and things before they ever yeah. happen. Salver Hardin. We see her, which is another instance of gender swapping. The idea is that he's sending a bunch of scientists who can collect all the important I, I love knowledge the book cover and create look the of Encyclopedia Galactica. Yes, very cult leader vibes. At the height. <laughs> but the actual stories, they move away from Trantor and the Empire recedes into the background for quite a few years. Since everyone we meet at the very beginning won't live very long into that 1000 year plan. The show could play around with it a little bit, and you think that they might, considering they cast Jared Harris and Lee Pace here. But they've also said that they plan on doing Peppers. the whole. St Clearly, this show they've they've been upfront that they would want to try to adapt the whole thing, where it's like going to cover a thousand years. Yeah, going to be kind of tough to keep some characters around for that long. But then again, I and I don't know if this exists in 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 the novels, but like clearly, you know, science fiction in the seventy years since has established, you know, things like holograms or you know anything that, that would sort of keep 
them their words or imagery. And and maybe it's like a Game of Thrones thing where, you know, Ned Stark doesn't make it the whole way yeah. through the show. It's totally possible that, that Lee Pace and uh, Jared Harris are really just the big names for the first season. And then they're going to go off on their, their own way with other characters. Who knows? But it is intriguing to be like kind of know up front that's like, well, you might not want to fall in love with these guys too much that's right right. when you have shows like this just like you said holograms uh other technology that it makes it so that these characters can stick around for a while cryo sleep or whatever they really wanted to keep somebody like demolition man let's bring it back you know it's about the three seashells you could tell that asimov is very interested in making sure it's clear what he's trying to say and as i mentioned that definitely comes down to people talking to each other explaining things to each other over and over really and that's just not something that naturally translates to long form tv the goal asimov had with these novels is to get people to explain things take their time re-explain something that is in hyper short supply uh in this day and age in our current society we've lost all sense of subtlety with social media and only having 140 characters to get our point across Uh, i think it's so interesting he's predicting prediction models and social media to a certain degree and all this stuff but also the point of his books is to counteract that the whole point is we work better when we don't go down those rabbit holes necessarily so i agree with pete that doesn't necessarily sound like exciting television but i think if you like the expanse uh you know if you like smart shows this sounds right. like it's going right. to be up your alley, and, and I, I love that sort of thing. I love – we joke you know, about not reading, but I love novels. I love right. I love getting and in there. Expanse at its best, Battlestar Galactica at its best, Game of Thrones at its best. We're really scenes between people, you know, having a sort of philosophical disagreement. That's all of, you know, sort of sci-fi and fantasy at its best. Like, cool, dragons and action, space gunfights and this and that. But really, you know, if you don't have some kind of core philosophical disagreement between some characters it's not going to keep you around for that long captain america yeah, civil war the right. best parts are the talking the it's crazy yeah 100 <laughs> percent. i think now is a good time for it i think actually science fiction is, is really is really having a resurgence in a lot of little places you know ado de Merzel. this is another gender swap but i really don't know how they're integrating this right here at this point i think that you would agree with me that in most cases when you think of an adaptation you want it to be as close as it can be to the source material but this is a really strange case where i I think that that would actually be terrible. And psychohistory is based on irrefutable science. The idea that nobody can know why they're doing what they're doing makes things really interesting. I guess what it'll come down to is, can they make it compelling TV? So let me know what you think in the comments. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my yes, channel if like, you have not like, Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Also, you know, us, if you like watching us be wacky and a little more silly and a little less introspective than Peach Pepper, yeah. that's also yeah. an option. If, you, if uh, you'd like it to be less thinky, more more silly. <laughs> he brought it up a lot, and I, apparently they're doing it a lot in this show. We made a joke earlier, but gender swapping. <laughs> like, you know, especially the, the novel is 70 70- 80 years old like it's okay to maybe make some changes you know know, what i haven't read the novel but i'm very upset about this (laughs) they've already (laughs) ruined the character (laughs) that's never a problem for me just get the right people get the right characters i i will say when you do start gender swapping and then those characters don't work and it's weird people go well why'd you do that if they get the right people it doesn't matter uh it's all casting and writing it's all casting and writing so so just hope that they write these characters the right way and that they get the right people to portray them as close to or as like, honestly to the source material as, as re- they can. Real, real talk, if they got rid of, you know, if Jared Harris wasn't in that they gave me J- Dame Judy Dench, I'm not going to be like, no, I refuse to, like, that woman is a treasure, I will watch her in stuff as well. Or Helen Mirren, because I got a, I got kind of a Ooh. Helen Mirren thing. <laughs> oh. I don't know if you've ever seen Caligula. <laughs> But look, I'm pretty excited for this. I, I would love for this to be a good show. I want to yeah. cover it. It looks like a 
looks like something smart that would actually interest me intellectually. Like we could actually right. get some good conversations instead of just right. Right. Speaking of good conversations, like if you guys are excited about watching Foundation, if you uh, have subscribed to Apple Plus or are planning on subscribing to Apple Plus, let us know. This show definitely intrigues us. I, we just know one of the limiting factors is not everybody has Apple Plus. Not everybody's interested in Apple Plus. But this could be like uh, their Stranger Things or their you know really the show that that brings a lot of people to the platform so yeah um, if, hey if you want us to buy apple plus watch this and tell you if you yeah, should watch we'll do let it. us know leave it yeah. in the comment section yeah. <laughs> i'm yeah. happy happy to to take the bullet for you guys well what do you think of foundation let us know in the comment section and we'll catch you in the next video